that we can that applies to business uh, and in life, and it's how do we get somebody to like us and like us in a very short period of time and within a couple of minutes, and they don't even have to want to like us. We can actually get them to like us whether they want to or not, because if we understand how the brain works uh, and how people behave, then we can figure this out and we can actually do it on demand. I know that sounds like a, you know a bold statement, but stick with me and I'll show you how this is done. You know, I think um, everyone would agree that. You know, in business, relationships are, are everything. And, you know, there's uh, studies they've done. There's a direct relationship between financial and business success and the size of your network, the number of people you know, and that sort of thing. Um, that's where they get the old, you know, good old boys club and all that kind of stuff, because uh, it's true. Um, and uh, But not just in business, but in life. I mean, think about it. Um, you know, if you just had a neighbor move in next door, uh, would it be helpful if that neighbor liked you versus them hating you? Uh, you know, when you go away, go out of town, you know, wouldn't it be nice to have somebody looking out for your house, so to speak, versus somebody that really doesn't like you, doesn't care, and, and it'll probably toilet paper your house when you're gone? Um, of course. So, you know, would it be better, you know, if we got into a restaurant and, and the server actually liked us for some reason? Um, you know, it's much more likely we're going to get good service, you know. Um, when we're in Home Depot talking to somebody, you know, it's always hard to get help in there. And But, you know, if you find somebody that really clicks with you and you find you know, that uh, it's obvious that they like you as a person, guess what? They're going to go out of their way to help you versus just doing the minimum. So it's in our best interest to be able to get people to like us and get people to like us quickly. And again, it doesn't take the cooperation of the other person. Um, we can we can get them to do it. We can get them to like us uh, whether they want to or not. So um, I'm going to show you four basic techniques. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do this, but these are the ones that I've found over the years make a big difference and are, are very easy to implement, uh, very easy to remember. Um, and it's something you can do literally after this video is over, you can go out and start doing it right away because it's not not that difficult. Uh, you know, so stick with me a few minutes and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, and by the way, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, please uh, you know hit that bell and subscribe. But a lot of great videos coming out and share this video with your friends and your colleagues and um, comment. We love uh, comments and uh, definitely always respond back. Um, so do all that YouTubey stuff. But you know. Um, this is a this is a fun topic for me. I always enjoy this, you know, because as I said, it's um, it's amazing to see human nature and how our brains work. And so I'm going to show you these four simple things. Um, you know, I talk about the subject live, you know, sometimes, and it's with an audience, and it's a lot of fun because I can get that interaction going with the audience. But so um, just you know, picture with me for a minute, you know, that I'm talking to uh, you know Bob in the front row here, you know, for a second. Um, you know, or if you picture a conversation you have with somebody you just met. Um, and so um, you might say, um, hey, so, so Bob, um, you know, where are you from? You know, a typical question, you know. Oh, great. Um, uh, so what, are, are you into sports or what's, what's your main hobbies, Bob? Okay, great. Um, you know, and um, so what, are, um, are you, um, Bob, are you uh, married or have a uh, significant other or whatever? Oh, great. So uh, how long have you guys been married, Bob? Okay, perfect. Now, um, if I was doing that live, you know, I usually ask the audience, hey, you know, did you notice anything um, about the questions I asked this guy? Uh, and, you know, you get varied answers, you know, and, you know, you can come up with anything, but um, I won't keep you in suspense, of course. Um, but what I did was I used his name in every single sentence, every question I asked him. And I used it at the beginning of sentences, I used it at the end, and I used it in the middle. Uh, and most likely, you did not hear that. Uh, it didn't sound weird to you. It didn't sound strange. Uh, and I've been doing this for 25 plus years, both in business and in life. And I have never had somebody say, geez, you know, um, why, well, why are you using my name so much? Um, and it's because, you know, in uh, any language in the world, um, the sweetest sound to the ear ears of an individual is the sound of their name. Um, because it's it's how we identify as human beings. You know, that's our, our core identity is attached to our name. Even if we don't like our name, you know, if our, if our name is Bob and we really hate that name, but our parents named that this anyway, you know. Um, but it's still um, something that we like because it, it recognizes us as a human being. Um, you know, and um, it, let me uh, take a step back further. I, hope, um, I should have mentioned this in the beginning. But, you know, again, all these techniques that I'm going to show you, these four these are things that come from experience. It's not something I've read in a book. Um, I've been using these for a very long time, so I guarantee that they do work. Um, you know, and that said, uh, nothing works every single time. You know, um, you know, it's not going to be a hundred percent. But 
you know, if we can get using these techniques, uh, if we can work 90% of the time, you know, um, would that be valuable to get, you know, nine out of 10 people that you try to get to like you, like you? Yeah, you know, so it's worth the effort. So a little, little side note there. But so, you know, of course, what we talked about first thing is the use of a, a name. And, uh, you know, it's so funny because I use it all the time, you know, it's not um, just in business. Like, I, every time I go through, you know, a drive through for instance, um, you know, unfortunately, um, I go through that place with the, the double arches too often, which is like a great Diet Coke. That's one thing about McDonald's, very consistent. But, um, you know, all they, they always have name tags, and I always call the, the person in the window by their first name uh, that's on their name tag. And you, the expression that suddenly that person who's barely paying attention to you suddenly perks up and looks at you, and you can tell it just, I just brighten their whole day just by using their name. I read their name tag, you know, um, and, you know, I get free food and all kinds of stuff. You know, I get good service, you know. Um, same thing with uh, waiters and waitresses. And, um, you know, I, whenever I go, I can use that. And it's, it's really, it's almost comical to see the expression change on somebody's face, you know. Um, so, and not to mention, you know, everybody these days, you know, it's like we're in a, we're in a world that's pretty messed up at times, you know. Um, a lot of us are having a bad day a lot of times, you know. And uh, if you can brighten somebody's day with just using their name, you know, it doesn't take much effort. Uh, that's the right thing to do as a human being anyway, uh, just to, to spread good vibes, if you will, you know. So uh, so use somebody's name. Um, and, um, the, um, and again, you're not going to get caught doing this either. Um, you know, so uh, the number two, what, what can we do besides using somebody's name? And all these... Um, Things work um, by themselves, but they're also even more powerful in combination. So, um, you know, when it comes to uh, the second thing, um, think about what um, what probably is the number one thing women would say that they wish their, you know, husband or significant other or whatever, wish that a husband would do on a daily basis and they couldn't do it enough. Um, and, they, and, you know, the more the better. And, you know, I've asked this question and you get varied answers whenever everybody's, you know, different. But in general, most women would say that they crave compliments, uh, that their husband can't tell them, you know, how nice their hair looks today, how great that outfit looks, you know, how nice it looks, whatever. Um, and, uh, but, and so that's pretty well known. I mean, most men, when they're dating and trying to court a woman, you know, they're, they're throwing out the compliments left and right. Why? Because they know it works. Um, you know, unfortunately, after we seal the deal, so to speak, sometimes we kind of forget that part, which my wife's always remind me of. Um, but uh, it works. And again, it's because we come from, you know, the toddler age where we're telling somebody's telling us we've been doing good or good job, Johnny, or whatever. And so that's deep in our psyche uh, and it makes us feel good. And uh, but what people don't talk about is that men respond to compliments just as well as women. The only difference is our egos won't let us, you know, admit that and, you know, we'll try not to, you know, show it, in, you know, in person or whatever. Uh, but it's a human thing. It's not just a woman thing. Um, but, you know, the caveat, because the compliments can be used the wrong way, people can tell if they're genuine compliments or are they just, you know, buttering up or kissing butt, you know, so to speak. And, uh, you know, you got to be very careful about that so you don't, they don't, because that can really do damage and they really won't like you. Um, because they think you're just trying to butter up to them. Um, and so how do we do that? we got to come up with genuine compliments. You know, um, it, it's been a very, very long time since I, you know, approached a woman in a bar. But, you know, of course, you know, the a lot of the attractive women know that they're attractive and there's always that prettiest girl in the bar type of thing. And all the guys are trying to hit on her. And what do they all do? And you women know this. They'll, they'll go up and, and say, hey, oh, my gosh, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen or you know, you're absolutely gorgeous. I had to come talk to you, you know, all those lines. And they've heard that a hundred times and they know, you know, while they may believe that they're beautiful or whatever, um, they know that, 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 that guy is just trying to butter up and, and that compliment, it's not genuine. He's got an agenda. He's there for something, if you know what I mean. Um, and, uh, so he doesn't come across as genuine. And, uh, I read a book years ago, um, called the game and, and I wish I could remember the name of the author, but he talked about, and, and, it was all about his background was he was sort of a professional pickup artist, if you will. And so he talked about the differences. You go into a bar and if you want to approach a woman, you don't go up there and tell her how beautiful she is. You do something different. Like um, you walk up and say, hey, are those, um, you know, are those nails, are they acrylic or are those real nails? 
And then regardless of what you say, oh, yeah, great, I like this or whatever. And that comes across as genuine because it's a genuine compliment. It's not, you know, some thing that everybody says and, you know, it makes that person think and it's different, you know. So point is something as mundane as, you know, looking at somebody's nails and seeing are they, you know, acrylic or real or whatever, um, you know, making a comment about their shoes like, hey, I like the shoes, where'd you get those? Um, or, you know, anything, um, you know, you can all, uh, behavior that they're doing. Um, even if you're looking at this person, you're like, I can't find anything I like about this person. If you, if you think about it, you can always come up with something and it can be genuine. So come up with a genuine compliment. You use that and you, people who don't even like you, if you compliment them, they cannot help it. Their brain gets a warm and fuzzy. They get a chemical release of dopamine that goes, oh, okay, okay thank you, you know. Um, even though they don't want to. Um, and so uh, it, it really, again, is funny to watch. You know, you start giving people genuine compliments, makes them into the conversation, and people can't help it, you know. So, uh, again, the first two we've got, using the name and using compliments. So the third category, and this is one that, you know, is a very deep, and, and it comes from... Um, you know, the neuro-linguistic programming, uh, NLP, that uh, Tony Robbins made famous back in the 80s. But, um, I mean, you could do a weeks-long seminar on this whole subject. It's a whole science in itself. But I'm going to kind of give you the quick and dirty of what, uh, of how to use it very quickly without having to know a whole lot about it. But, um, and that's the concept of mirroring and matching. Uh, what does that mean? That means that people like people who are like themselves, you know. There's a reason we tend to segregate, you know, people. People, you know, segregate um, by, uh, you know, a neighborhood. It might be all the people from, you know, Croatia live in this one neighborhood because they all speak the same language. They all have the same background, you know, culturally or whatever. So they're like each other. They feel comfortable and they feel safe with each other. So we like people who are like ourselves, you know. Um, and so that's what this is about. And there's really two aspects to mirroring and matching. It's number one is body language. Um, and number two is a uh, vocal or verbal um, language, how we, we talk to somebody. So let's talk about the body language first. It's real simple. So if you're meeting somebody in person, uh, it's about sort of mirroring and matching, not copying, but sort of modeling what they are doing and using the similar body language because subconsciously their brain picks up on it and says, oh, this person's like me. They're kind of doing the same things I do, you know? Um, so it can be something as simple as, you know, they, they put their hand on their neck like this, you know, and they go, hmm, okay, yeah, well, yeah whatever. Um, and then 15, 20 seconds or later, you know, you just, you know, put your hand up. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be the same spot. It could be, you put it on your head, you put it up here. You, it's just the idea is that it's something similar um, that gives the idea that it's a similar gesture, you know. Um, they lean forward like this, you know, um, in a conversation. Um, so what do you do? Wait 15, 20 seconds. Uh, and then you lean forward. They cross their arms like this, you know. Um, 15, 20 seconds or later, you cross your arms. Um, and again, it's comical because you'll feel when you're doing it, you're going to like, oh my gosh, this person is going to think I'm copying them. I'm going to get caught. You know, they're going to say, why quit copying me? You know. But again, doing this 25 plus years, I have never had somebody say, quit copying me or whatever, and not realizing what we're doing. And it's because it's natural. Uh, I mean, don't, like I said, give a little interval, 15, 20 seconds before you do anything, um, you know, because they probably wouldn't figure out you're copying. And if you, they lean forward, you lean forward, you, they touch your head, you touch your head, you know, so don't do that. But uh, put that, that break in there. And so consciously that our brain is going to start associating and saying, hey, this person's exactly like me, um, even if it's just body language going back and forth. Um, and like I said, this is a very complex subject to really get into the weeds on, but you know, um, but eventually you'll get into a sort of sync with them uh, and you can actually start making gestures and movements, uh, what they call uh, pacing and leading, where they start uh, responding to you. So that's when you lean forward and you'll see them lean forward. Um, so, it's, I mean, it's actually comical to see the difference, but we, you don't have to go that far. But so all we're doing in this, um, uh, this part is just using our body language to let them know that we are like them. Uh, and again, even if they don't like us initially, they can't help it. Their brain will not allow them not to like us because we're similar. Um, and so we've got body language. And how do we use the same thing with voice? Um, you know, you think about, um, for example, somebody from, you know, New York, Manhattan. Uh, what are, you know, if you're going to pick a um, caricature or, um, 
you know, a generalization stereotype of somebody, you know, what are they? They speak fast, they speak loud, they're abrasive, gruff, you know, they may throw some colorful language in there, you know, you know, and that's just, everybody speaks like that. Everybody, that's their, their deal, you know, and it's not meant to be offensive or, you know, uh, confrontational necessarily or anything like that. It's just culture. That's, that's how they roll. Um, you know, and then what's the opposite of that? You go down to like deep South, like, you know, Alabama, you know, or something. Uh, how do those people generally talk? Generally, they talk slower, you know, they talk softer uh, and they use different vernacular. Like y'all want to go over? Um, do you see that mix master over there? You know, so they're, you know, they're speaking completely different. And so what happens when somebody from the deep South calls, you know, that gruff New Yorker and starts talking to them? Well, of course, they're complete opposites. So they, it's gonna, that's the opposite effect of what we will want because that's saying we're as different as can be. You're not like me. And so we have no uh, motivation and, and we're actually going to create barriers and somebody not to like us who would do that. So what do we do? You know, like in our business, you know, we do a lot of cold calling and, you know, we have callers uh, from the deep south that will call into, you know, um, you know, someplace in the northeast. One, we try not to do that. Um, but if you do that, you know, I've done it many, many times. And the way you do that is by changing. So if you're typically a slower speaker, um, maybe you're from the deep south or Texas, whatever, you got a little bit of an accent. Um, you know, um, you typically do not, your volume is lower, you're quieter. Um, you know, um, when you speak to somebody in New York, whatever, you've got to up your game. You've got to increase your volume artificially. You've got to increase the speed of your speech, you know. Um, you've got to, you know, if they start throwing in F-bombs every other word, not saying you have to, you know, cuss along with them, but, you know, if you can put a few questionable words in there, again, what's that doing that's saying, hey, I'm like you. Um, and, it, you know, it's really comical to hear the difference, just like you can see it in person with body language. You can see it over the phone. You can hear the tone of the voice change, you know. Initially, you may answer the phone because it's a cold call. You don't know what you're going to get. Um, you know, like, I tend to be a very fast talker, as you might notice. Um, and so when I'm talking to one of my clients from the Deep South, I have to, like, consciously slow down. I have to lower my voice, you know. I have to try to, you know, and it's, it's hard for me, you know. Um, and, you know, so it takes practice, but if we can do that on demand, we can actually get someone to think, Hey, I'm like them. Um, and, uh, that again, is that subconscious thing, whether they want to or not. And so it's a conscious way of changing, you know, and mirroring and matching them. So, um, I'm just going to abbreviate this as M and M, but not the candy, you know what that means. So, uh, both in body language and, um, you know, in vocal use, uh, verbally, how we speak to somebody. Um, and uh, so, uh, you know, and there's there's deeper perceptions too, because, you, know, uh, you know, I'm sure I'm going to offend somebody from New York, but uh, let's face it, I'm going to, you know, I know enough about, I've met enough of you guys that, you know, you people, you think that people from the South are idiots because they speak slow. And people from the South think that everybody from New York is a jerk because they speak fast. And, you know, it's the speaking styles. And when they got nothing, it's got nothing to do with each other. But because they're different, um, you know, and we, we create that barrier, we have to consciously go in there and change that barrier if we want to have those relationships with people. Um, so mirroring and matching, like I said, it's a big subject we could talk about for a long time, um, but uh, that's just the basics of it. And then, you know, sort of the, the last area um, we can talk about is, uh, it's one of those things that, this is what typically people try to do, like sales people try to do it, uh, it's like the one technique they use to get somebody to like them or whatever. And, you know, it's the commonalities thing, you know. It's the, uh, hey, yeah, you're from Iowa. Oh, yeah, me too, you know, or my mother's from Iowa or something, you know. Uh, but the problem is what, what you'll typically see, and this goes kind of back to the compliment thing, um, is that it has to be genuine. And, you know, what will typically happen, you know, a salesperson will say, oh, yeah, you're from Iowa, great, you know. Um, then you'll say something else, and they go, oh, yeah, you know, and it's sort of a me too. You know, and then the third thing will go, oh, yeah, me too. You know, and so they start kind of parroting everything. And, you know, after a while, they're just trying to kiss my butt, you know. Uh, it just, again, doesn't come across as genuine. So how do we do that? Uh, how do we still use this technique and yet make it come across as genuine? So, you know, somebody says, hey, I'm from Iowa. Oh, great. You know, that's funny. I'm from there, I'm from there too or whatever, you know. Um, and then, you know, you go on to the next point in the conversation. You know, a minute later, if you talked about something else, you go, hey, you know, I remember you said you were from Iowa. 
have you ever been to, you know, XYZ restaurant, uh, you know, in Des Moines? Um, you know, and then they go, oh, oh, no, I don't know where that is. And they, oh, yeah, it's great food. Da, 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 da. You know, you should check that out. Whatever. Take another break, you know, let, them, let the conversation go on, uh, you know, and, um, you know, and then bring up some other commonality you might have said. They're, you know, a big Kansas City Chiefs fan. Go Chiefs. Um, you know, whatever, you know, you can make a comment there, but later on in the conversation. So the point is, don't do the back-to-back, -back, you know, me too type of stuff because it comes across as butt kissing and you know ingenuine uh, so we want to be very genuine with our compliments we want to be genuine with the commonalities uh, the commonalities in, in my um, experience is not nearly as strong as the first three uh, but if you combine it with the first three uh, it can really well it can enhance it and really work well so the more you can use of these four um, ideas uh, the better you're going to be off or uh, better you're going to be and um, you know, if you combine them together, you know, they're even more powerful. So uh, the cool thing about it is that, you know, these are these are really so easy. Like, think about it. Name, you know, using somebody's name, complimenting them, marrying and matching, you know, and commonalities. I mean, how easy is that, really? Um, I mean, we've got no excuse, you know, not to do that. You can, like I said, literally, you know, I would challenge you, go out after this video, you know, next person you meet, start using their name. Use their name in every sentence you say to them and see if they, if you get caught. Because I guarantee I have never been caught using the name, compliments, marrying and matching, or commonalities. Never in 25 plus years in business or in personal life. Uh, so these things work, you know, uh, and they work very well. You know, like I said, not going to work 100% of the time, but, you know, in combination, they're very powerful and they're going to make a big difference in your life, both personally, you know, and professionally. Um, and then uh, before we wrap up, I'll give you one, um, one bonus tip, if you will. Uh, just remember, uh, if you smile, you can say anything. So you can say to somebody, I hate your guts, you know, uh, and you're smiling. So their subconscious and their brain is looking there going, um, he just said he hated me. And yet he's smiling. Is he joking? Is he a psycho? Is he, you know, so yeah, they can't help but take the um, compliment of you smiling with them, um, even though the verbiage doesn't match it. So smile that's another one of my struggles is i tend to be a very serious person and it's not on purpose but uh my facial expressions sometimes are not uh not always smiling like some people are always smiling my wife is always smiling uh and she's like what's wrong with you you know nothing I'm just you know so i have to practice it it's a, it's a conscious effort for me so some of these have come easy to you some are going to feel really weird the first time you do it but after a while it'll become totally natural so um, again, subscribe, uh, you know, to the channel. Uh, we have a lot of great videos and we have more stuff like this on here every day. So um, appreciate your time and go on and use these. Uh, you can make a difference uh, in your personal life, your business life, uh, and, you know, you're going to brighten somebody's day. I guarantee it. So thanks for listening.